G'day viewers, welcome to another super cool helpful repair video from the Goat Shed. So today is Saturday the 3rd of June 2023. It's 13 degrees Celsius outside which equates to approximately 55.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Now today we're going to do a, a short video on troubleshooting a few problems we found on the high hand that we've shown a video on previously. We test games over a period of around a week and we found a couple of problems that we weren't very happy with in this game. Well, they actually stopped the game working. Now, this is a funny thing about electromechanical pinball machines. You know, we go through the games, we clean the switches and adjust them, but of course you can still get troubles. Now, what I propose to do, I, I did a video of all my pinball machines in my shed there, oh, I think it was about April, and I said that I was going to do some repairs over winter. Well, it's winter now. It officially started here on um, Thursday, just gone. And I'll make a separate video of some of those repairs and we'll use the schematic diagrams to show you how we're going to fix those things and, and the actual fix and what the fault was. So that should be a little bit of fun. Um, I'll be working on Williams Apollo. Uh, what else will I be doing? I'll be doing... Williams Soccer, a couple of little problems with that, and possibly Gottlieb Sing Along. So, yeah, you can join us in those videos and see the or video, and we'll see the repair that we do. Now, with this high hand, what we what we were doing, we were testing it, and just what happened all of a sudden, it just wouldn't start off the off the replay button, even though there were replays on there. Nor would it start off the coin switch. Now this is the very first game that I've ever experienced where we've set it up to work on coin because it had the coin mechs in it, the coin shoots are in there like they're not missing a lot and we got it to go on the 20 cent slot with a 20 cent coin mech. Had to make a few little adjustments and clean those mechs but that all works. So here we've got the machine and it's currently on and I'm, I'm just going to show you now Oh, there's Spanky and his friends he met at the vet when he was having his transplants. So he's quite happy. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually now, I'm pushing in the start button. And absolutely nothing is happening. Nothing. Now, this machine was working perfectly. What could be the problem? Okay. The first thing you would do, of course, is have a quick look at the, the replay button button and make sure that it's connecting and shorting it out which we've done but the next thing we'd need to do would be have a look and see what's next in the path so by that not operating it's not pulling in the start relay now before we went any further we we shorted out the the switches on the replay button from the inside and that had no avail. So the next thing we, we did, we've hooked up a jumper lead onto the fuse. Just try and show you that there. So you can see the, the black jumper lead hooked up to the 25 volt fuse. Okay. Now what we're going to do now as we're going to do some testing. But before we do that, let's go and have a quick look at the schematic. So here's the area of the schematic we're interested in. Here you can see the normally open replay button. Now, if we start over here, we'll have our anti-cheat switch, which is a red and white wire here and a slate wire there now that's the one on the on the front door we we know that's okay because we checked it and oh i, I did forget to mention we did short that out as well 
motor 2B, a normally closed switch. Now 2B, that's a maroon and green and slate. We can check that. But because this happened more all of a sudden, let's have a look at here. We've got motor 1C, a normally closed switch. And it's got the maroon and green coming from motor 2B to one side of the switch. And it has orange on the other side. Now, we also have a brown wire going between the other side of the replay button and the W relay. The W relay is the... Um, is the third shoot relay in this game and then it goes on over here which is getting out of screen now which doesn't really concern us at the moment because at this point something's not happening it's not not pulling in the start relay which is down here on the left just out of the picture let's just see if we can show you the start relay can we see that there there it is there it is there. So you can see the start relay, we have this wire joining up through the Y, the S, the X and the W. So they're all the coin. The Y is the, um, what's the Y? The two coins for play. The X is the two play relay and the W is the third shoot. And of course S is start. Now, you come up here, we've got to have a, a, a switch closed, the zero position ball count unit. Uh, if we're going through the replay button, which um, the zero position replay unit switch, that's got to be closed. The W switch has got to be closed. And motor 1C has got to be closed. 2B and the anti-cheat switch. So... What we'll do, let's get a jumper wire and have a look how we're going to fix that. Okay, so there's our jumper wire hooked up to the the fuse, the 25 volt fuse. Now, let's just get the other end. We're holding in one side and we're just going to, we'll put this probe on that orange wire and see what happens. And there you go, straight away it's working. So that tells us that there's something wrong with that switch on motor 1C. So here's the switch with the orange wire on it, just here. And I've now cleaned that switch. I thought I'd get the Dremel into it and give it a clean. Okay, so now we've cleaned that switch up. It should work. So here we go. And it did. So it's just a really, really, really dirty switch. Contrary to the fact that it cleaned it with a file before, that's what happened. Now, we had a few other problems with this on the way around. And I'm going to show you. The machine would reset. The score rails would all reset. And the VR relay. Or it says V on the top. V is the, VR is the reset. It, it wasn't releasing. Now, there's only a couple of switches in the circuit that, that control that. Let's go back and have a little look at those and I'll show you. So here's the VR relay. I'm sorry about this. I can't uh, get the gimbal working straight down like this. It just won't go to that angle. There's the coil. So there's a slate and white wire joined up to a, a switch on motor 4D with an orange and white on the other side. And then you've got your reset switches or zero position switches, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, over to the red and white side makes a circuit. Now, all those switches were clean and working perfectly. We did suspect that that switch um, 4D might be faulty, but it wasn't. So, what this turned out to be was mechanical. Now, I've got the can we get a focus down there? Wait a moment, I think we'll do this. It's a bit hard to see, but where I'm touching down there, there's a little bit of an air gap there, see that air gap? That was, or used to look, something like this. 
well not something like this, it did look like this. There you go. That was it before. Now, see where I've got those black marks? So what we've done, the, to the left and to the right, we've got the grinder and a file, and we've ground that down to just have that little tab in the middle there. Now, I was told about this some time ago, I have mentioned this before, but when I do courses uh, once a month with Mark Gibson's Fun With Pinball, one of the coaches there, he is a very, very experienced EM guy, he's been working on them since the 70s. Tim Meehan mentioned these interlocking relays can develop like a residual magnetism and stick. Now this is the first time I've encountered this but what was happening, and it made a lot of sense what he said, what was happening, the score motor would cycle and cycle around and it, it might go for 20 seconds and all of a sudden it would unlock, it would it would be okay. Or it would play up and then you'd just gently touch the, the relay or rocket and it would be okay. Now, at first, I thought it was a, a bad switch on there, and I, I checked the switches and everything. There's a top stack and a bottom stack of switches, and um, they were all touching well and very clean, so we didn't have to worry about that. So I thought, well, look, I said to Spanky, I said, let's try this trick that Tim mentioned some time ago. And, yeah, I had to go out yesterday, um, for a few hours and while I was away Graham got the grinder out got it on the grinder and ground a spare one down we had and yeah we've played about 10 to 15 games on it since and it hasn't played up mind you I'm going to be testing it a bit further because it seemed to work quite well before without playing up but then it played up but we're fairly confident now this will fix it so thanks very much Tim Moon and um, that's a great a great uh, tip for anybody working on these. A lot of the, the Gottlieb baseball games use those interlock relays. Some had like three of them along the along the relay bank, and uh, probably gave trouble. So that's great. Now, there's not much else I really wanted to mention, but they were just a couple of faults we had. Well, one other fault we did discover on this: we had a really noisy score reel. I think it was the thousand score reel and it sounded like the coil was buzzing on a flipper so what do you do when something like that occurs well what we did we simply took the score reel apart and we pulled the um, coil bracket off and took the coil out and had a good look at it and the coil stop was indented. So in other words, the plunger wasn't hitting it squarely and it was making a buzzing noise. And now it's quite silent, which which is quite good. We're quite quite pleased about that. So, oops, wrong one. It was brr, brr, now it's good. So we fixed that as well. So we just got a bit more testing on this and we'll be able to ring the customer up and we'll be able to say, hey, you can come and get your pinball machine. I think you'll be, <clears throat> you'll be very, very happy with that. Put a fair bit of work into this game. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's really rare to see two coin mechs in a game. So we've got the one here on the left going, which is the 20 cent. Um, what we had to do, though, um, when we got this, we, had, we didn't have any 10 cent shoots in stock. <clears throat> we were lucky to have 20 cent uh, sorry I beg your pardon yeah we only had 10 cent shoots in stock so we had to file a little bit out of that one so the, the 20 cent coin would fit in but it all works if he wants to it's set up for 3 coins 3 plays per coin on 20 cents so bit of trouble with the drop targets the guy didn't want to buy new drop targets which is fair enough so we've had to um, do a little bit of work on a couple of the individual targets. Just little things like making sure 
that the wasn't too much tension on those switches. You get too much tension on those point scoring switches, and it'll the trigger will bind on the way down. Um, so we didn't put new springs in, but we, what we had to do was cut a couple of the the trigger springs. The trigger springs are these ones here that that hook on hook on there and then hook underneath. I think we did three of those. So all in all, we're fairly happy with this this game now. We've finally gotten back onto this blue chip bingo. We've had this here a long time. Um, we've done a considerable amount of work on this. So we decided we'd better bite the bullet and try and finish it off. Essentially it's working, but this is what you call a six card bingo. And card three isn't paying certain configurations. So the, the top two pay lines work. No, the top three pay lines work and the bottom two don't, either horizontally or vertically. Now that mightn't mean a lot to people who don't know much about bingos, but of course to a bingo player it does. So what we're doing now, he's actually pulling apart yeah, the, search disc. the search disc, which we feel there's a broken wire on there, we're pretty sure there is. It's got to be the bottom one, of course. And yeah, it's not the top search disc, it's the bottom one. Let me show you. That's the top search disc, but you can see all the crisscross of wires under there. The top search is for the f cards four, five, and six, and that's one, two, and three. And the third card circuit is this area here, but unfortunately this area here is only paying a couple of pays, so we think there's a break in a common that we've got to check. You can't really see it that good here, so we've got to take it out and buzz it all out to make sure everything's right. It's a bugger of a job, but it's got to be done. Bingos are fun. So here's a quick update on the back veranda. It's pretty well almost completed now. The kitchen's all in. Most importantly, the bar fridge is in. Spanky's very happy about that. There's the um, smoker. We've got hot and cold running water over there. Um, just a bit of storage, storage area over there as well. Um, just some more lights to put in. Und un uh, under the top. Here's the back wall, that's where the TV will go. There's a fan going up here. All the LED lights on the roof. Came up pretty good. There's like a concealed sort of door. It blends in with the, the rest of the, the thing. And just to show you now what we're doing. There's where the old, that shed was. That's where the cocky used to live. That's all been removed and there's a new piece going to go in there now. So everything's happening in the goat shed. Anyway, that's about all from us now. The sun's starting to come out. Oh, look at that. We've got a table and chair down there for relaxation. Spanky goes out there and has a drink of an afternoon. Weather's cleared up for a nice winter's day. So once again, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'd much appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up on our videos and don't forget to hit the bell button so you get informed when... We put new videos up and this has been another Goat Shed presentation.